Who are you talking to? The young boy spins around, surprised to find his father standing behind him. The boy seems nervous and hesitant to answer, but after being asked again, he admits to his father that he was talking to the lady in the fountain. The boy's father is confused. The lady in the fountain? That's right. The boy explains that she is nice, just like mom. He thinks the woman in the fountain may even be his mom. The father sighs. He takes the boy's hand and leads him back inside the house, where the father is hosting a small get-together. One of the father's guests asks if things are okay, and he tells her that everything is fine. He's just worried about his son. It has been a very difficult year following the death of his wife. He tells her that he's afraid he might be developing behavioral issues as he watches the boy staring out the window at the fountain in their backyard. Later that week in school, the children are supposed to be drawing pictures of their families. The teacher moves from child to child, checking on their progress, and stops at the boy. She wants to know what he's working on. The boy explains that it is a drawing of him, his dad, and his mom who lives in the fountain. The teacher doesn't understand. His mom lives in the fountain? That's right, the boy tells her. The fountain in their backyard was her favorite place in the whole world. His mother had told him that it was a magical place and was the reason they bought the house. After she died, he heard a voice coming from the fountain. It doesn't sound like his mom, but he knows it's her. She lives in the fountain now. The father thanks the teacher for calling and promises that he'll talk to his son. He's very sorry that the other children are frightened by the stories about a woman in their fountain and he's going to make sure this whole business comes to an end for good. That night, as he is putting the boy to bed, he tells him that he knows he misses his mom, but he needs to stop with all of these claims about a woman in the fountain. And as much as he misses her and wishes that his mother would come back, he needs to realize that she's gone and not coming back. The father kisses the boy in the forehead and tells him one more time that there will be no more stories about the woman before tucking him in for the night. As soon as his father is gone though, the boy gets out of bed creeps to his bedroom window that looks down on their backyard and stares at the fountain. He watches as reflections dance on the rippling water. The water goes oddly still, until a hand that appears to be made out of water seems to emerge out of the surface of the fountain and waves at him. The father leaves the bathroom and glances in to check on his son before heading back to his bedroom. He bolts upright when it dawns on him that his son wasn't in bed. He runs into the son's room and pulls the blankets off the bed, but no one is there. He frantically calls for his son and looks around the room when he sees something. He hurries to the window where he watches as his son walks towards the fountain. But what really has his attention is the woman, translucent and shining under the moonlight, beckoning for the boy to approach her. The father rushes downstairs and out into the backyard where his son is in an embrace with the watery woman. He is terrified, but his fatherly instincts take over and he sprints to the fountain and rips the boy away from the creature. As he pulls the boy back from the fountain, he watches as the solid, watery figure of the woman appears to turn back into a liquid and collapse into the fountain. The father brings the boy inside the house. He doesn't understand what's going on, but the father just keeps repeating that he's okay. He's safe now. The next day, the father is on the phone with their local priest. He knows how crazy this sounds, but the police didn't believe him, and he didn't know where else to turn. The priest tells him not to worry, that he will be there soon to take care of it. The priest arrives at the house with two assistants and tells the father that it would be best if he and his son leave. The boy is crying, pleading with him not to hurt the nice woman in the fountain. The father has to struggle to restrain his son, but eventually is able to get him out of the house. Once they're gone, the priest turns to his assistants. He takes off his shirt to reveal a tactical vest underneath emblazoned with the SCP logo as his assistants do the same. Time for containment, he says, as they head out into the backyard towards the fountain and the anomalous creature that lives there. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob, and this is SCP-054, also known as the Water Nymph. SCP-054 is the designation that the SCP Foundation has given to an anomalous entity with some very strange properties. Made up of nine liters of what appears to be completely normal spring water, SCP-054 most often appears in the form of a female humanoid, but it is capable of a variety of forms, such as other humanoids and simple geometric shapes. It is unknown just how it is capable of taking and holding these shapes, or how it moves around once it does so, since all tests performed so far have failed to show any thermal, electromagnetic, biological, or other phenomenon present in its body that could explain its abilities. Whenever SCP-054 enters a body of water, it will become indistinguishable from the surrounding water, 
and it appears that it must fully submerge itself on occasion in order to replenish its full volume, which is constantly being reduced through normal evaporation. Water that has evaporated off of the anomaly has also been collected by the foundation, and it too is indiscernible from regular water and exhibits no special properties. After its discovery, SCP-054 was moved to Site-08 for containment, where additional research and study of the creature could take place. Its special containment cell was made watertight and equipped with a specialized climate control system, as well as an ornate fountain filled with fresh spring water. Surprisingly, the entity seemed to enjoy its new home, and appeared happy to interact with Foundation researchers, guards, and maintenance staff, frequently mimicking their forms often in a playful manner. While at first, 054 would retreat back into its fountain when it wasn't interacting with staff, as time went on, it seemed to grow more and more comfortable, and eventually came to spend almost all of its time outside of the water. Though it would still always return back to the safety of the fountain and disappear into the water when attempts were made to extract samples directly from its body. Though it avoided having its water drawn, it was through a variety of different tests by SCP researcher Dr. Seskel that much of the Foundation's knowledge of SCP-054 was gained. Though whether the methods researchers used to acquire this information were appropriate is up to you to decide. In a test dubbed the Water Loss Experiment, SCP-054 was denied access to water. As a result, its shape changed, with 054 becoming more compact, most likely in order to reduce its surface area as much as possible and reduce the rate of evaporation that occurred. For the first few days after access to water was removed, it would happily greet anyone who entered its containment cell, which may indicate that it was attempting to charm staff into providing water. When after a few days its water supply was still not turned on, it stopped acting especially cheery, perhaps realizing that its happy disposition was doing nothing to advance its cause. In an extreme temperature test, researchers were authorized to experiment with subjecting SCP-054 to temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. The entity became more and more lethargic as the temperature in the testing area was lowered, and eventually froze completely. Ice chips were collected for study, but analysis revealed no abnormalities or differences from standard water. The opposite test was also performed, and the temperature was raised to 95 degrees Celsius, just shy of the 100 degree boiling point of water. 054 became very aggressive as the temperature approached the upper threshold at which water can remain a liquid, and it attempted to escape the testing enclosure. Researchers noticed that following this test, the entity became increasingly resistant to being moved from its containment cell to the testing area, likely fearing that the researchers intended to do it harm. SCP-054's memory was tested as well, and it proved very skilled at solving puzzles and navigating mazes. Researchers initially had an issue with motivating 054 to participate, but Dr. Seskel discovered that the anomaly was quite responsive to the use of electrical shocks. The researchers would often push 054 too hard in these tests, though, and soon found that they would need to give it a 48-hour rest period between any strenuous experiments. The final test performed was meant to gain some insight into how SCP-054 maintains its form, by seeing how it reacted to a hydrochloric acid solution. It unsurprisingly resisted this test, and the temperature in the testing area was lowered to just above freezing in order to try and control its behavior. This did not prove to be enough, though. SCP-054 fought back against Dr. Seskel and his research assistant, seriously injuring both of them and necessitating a halt to the test. In fact, all testing on SCP-054 was stopped following this incident, as it appeared to develop an extreme mistrust of males, who made up the majority of the staff who had been performing the tests. Following this attack on the Foundation staff, SCP-054 was classified as Euclid. However, once the tests ceased and 054 no longer had to come in contact with the research staff who were in charge of the experiments, there was a span of over five years without any further incidents. Following this period, SCP-054's rating was downgraded to safe and now seems willing to begin participating in experiments once again, though now all tests fall under the purview of Biology Unit E7 and the use of only female personnel is recommended. Though classified as safe, Caution must still be maintained when working with SCP-054. Maintenance personnel are required to wear chemical suits when working inside the containment area, and must spend 10 minutes in a special drying room once they exit to ensure that 054 has not somehow managed to cling to any part of them. In the event of a containment breach, the entire enclosure is to be flushed with liquid nitrogen to freeze the entity. Is the water nymph an example of the SCP Foundation going too far? 
containing a harmless anomaly who appears happy and benign until harm is done to it? Or is this simply the price we must pay in order to further our knowledge of anomalies and potentially stop a dangerous threat to humanity? The answer to that question is up to you. To further your own knowledge of anomalies that the SCP Foundation has in containment and potentially find the answer to that question, I recommend you watch the files for SCP-007, Abdominal Planet, and SCP-163, An Old Castaway. And as always, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives.